What's up guys? So I am back in Dr. Campbell's Grove and this little half acre back here hosts 250 trees, 80 varieties. We're gonna get some pro tips, talk about how he gets the production he gets, probably get a couple more of those trade secrets, so hold tight. I'm Ian. And uh, I'm Richard. I'm his father. Yeah, and we have this grove down here in Homestead where, I mean, if you guys watch the channel, you probably already know. We grow mangoes out here, very specialty mangoes, the best mangoes around. And so we're always looking to improve. We're always looking to keep moving forward. Namdak Mai, which is the tree that's standing here right next to us right here. The Namdak Mai is a mango that we just can't do anymore. So uh, what we're going to do today is we're actually going to show you how to top work a, one tree. Of, an, a tree that's a four-year-old tree in order to put a Venus on there. And Venus is one of our newer varieties and to move forward because in our orchard, the whole point of what we're doing is always to bring the very best, the newest, the best quality, the brightest, um, the and, best growing, best bearers. And, and in order to have the right season and to be basically work for our market the way we do it. All right, so I'm going to go find a suitable budwood right here. Now what we're looking for in terms of the budwood is we're looking for um, things that are starting to push but not very that too far. Now, oh, okay, perfect. We'll use these. So, what we're doing, you can see the bud is pushing out, but it's not not too far. We're gonna take that off. Can you hold that in? Yep. All right. This one's a little too far, but I'll still take it There's because the, the others right will push. Pushing out. All right. You have your knife. Yep. And you can take the leaves off of that. And while Ian is taking the leaves off of that, we'll go over here and we will prepare the tree. All right, so what we're going to do now is, remember what I said is this, this is a Namdakmai that is too, um, we've had it, this is a four-year-old tree right here, and it has only produced a couple fruit. That is not obviously not what for. we want. We want it to produce a lot of fruit. Copious fruit. Every so year. we're going to go ahead now. This is kind of a pretty drastic um, grafting method, um, and but it 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 certainly is one. I'll get you another one while you do this one when we okay. do it. But gotcha. So what I'm going to do is just decapitate this tree. All right. Now one of the things is when you cut the tree down like this, you got to remember that we're, we'll have to cover this trunk because a tree like this will get sunburned down here okay this is like uh it's like uh like if you've never been to a nude beach and you suddenly decide to go to a nude beach you better wear sun protection that's all i gotta say all right so it's the same thing with the tree so i'll show you what we do with that so all we're gonna do is this is the hard part man it's really hard to decapitate one of your trees that you've been growing but you gotta move forward and you gotta produce all right was that that tangle foot on there yeah, yeah, that was a tangle foot right there. Oh, the idea with the top work here is you want to look right there and see where the bark starts and the inside of the tree. Then you want to just do a little score right there on the bark and push it down and insert the budwood right there. You can also see the, the latex um, pebbling up on the, on the, right there at the cambium layer. He's just going to wrap the so the what I'm going to do is I'm wrapping film. the budwood up in parafilm, okay? And the reason you do that is you obviously don't want it to lose water and die before it gets a chance to heal and grow. All right. So I got my little cut in there. I just want to separate the bark. Right there, that's good. Just create a little separation. You don't have to go too far because when you get the little cut in the bud stick, that'll push it far all the way. So you don't want to over pull it out and break the, the little bark that you cut. And I'll do one for the second bud stick right here. So you always start two? Yeah, I usually do my cuts before. And you can do, we do top work sometimes where we do four bud sticks. It depends. It really depends on, we're just going to two two just just because. So then when I have my holes already cut, I want to make the cuts on my bud sticks here. 
So I just go up and do the first cut. It's a bit of a bad cut. All right. There we go, that's a good cut right there. You just wanna make sure you get down past the layer there to the cambium so you can create a good contact. Then you just stick it in here and push it down. And that's perfect right there. So that's one of them. It's a good cut right there. Just wanna press that down. Wanna do one more? Yeah, I can do one more. Oh, see that one? That one wasn't pulling apart right, so. Okay. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Okay, there's that one. Just to give all the buds a little bit of space, I'll do one on this side right here. So I get down here. And if you're wondering, the reason we do this grafting is because we want the right fruit. Because if you plant them from seed, you're not going to get the same fruit from the seed you planted. We're putting a Venus on here, which is one of our new varieties. It's a very good one. Just push that one in down there. I gotta cut this little. Okay. That should fit. Perfect. All right. Okay. Now let me step in here and just cover this yep. up here. Gotcha. I'm like the sous chef. Okay. <laughs> Prepare the plate now. Exactly. So what I'm using here, and, and you should probably, you know, you normally you can do, um, you know, a brush to do this, but I don't happen to have a brush, so I'm using my fingers. This is a. Uh, uh, tree wax but it's a commercial version of it Japanese version actually and I'm just covering this so that the whole idea whenever you're doing this um, grafting is you got to keep these things from losing water all right so you see I did that okay now I got basically that taken care of now I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna get this and I have a piece of tape watch your yeah okay there we go Opa. nope almost better not to do it that way all right and so the reason I'm doing this so now I'm going to pull these down nice and tight like that. Okay. And then when you finish it off, finish it off with a nice little half hitch like that. And then you're done. And then you just get a little more of this. Just to make sure you cover everything up. Now the nice thing when you're doing top works like this is you have a trunk, you have a big root system, and so you have a lot of energy, uh, down, energy there. down there. It's gonna, it'll push this thing and you'll get good success. But remember what I also said, that you have to worry about sun burning. All right, so we cut off, can you hand me those branches in? Yeah. So we cut these branches off right here, and we'll take these branches, and we will basically do like that. And create a sun barrier. A little shade house, huh? A little yeah. shade house like this, right? Exactly. Can you hold that in for a second? Yeah. And then I get a little more here. of that tape. Ah, perfect. 
tie it together. Alright. And I just kind of get this all tied together like that. That way it doesn't sunburn. And then in about two weeks, this will start to uh, grow. And then you can take off the shade. Yep. There you go. And then we'll have a Venus. We'll replace the... And that's how you top work a tree. All right. <laughs> All right, so what we're, this is a tree that we top worked last year. This actually had fruit um, this year. So what this was, this used to be a juicy peach um, variety. Juicy peach variety didn't work for us, it never bore. So last summer at this time, we cut it down just like we did uh, earlier and we grafted onto it with four different branches of a sweet tart. This is a sweet tart variety and you can see that it grew up like this this is less than a year so after we grafted it it basically was 11 months and it carried about six fruit on here sweet tart's not that big it's only a fruit about like this so we were able to carry it and you can see the way we do that though is you never just let these things grow we do a lot of tipping so you see how we when you get these branches that are basically two hand lengths long, we tip it and tip it and tip it, tip it good. Do, 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 do. No, just kidding. Right, anyway, uh, so we do, that's how we make these things into bushes, okay? Mango bushes bear a lot better than mango trees. They always do. So the more growing tips you have, the more blooms you get, the more chance you have of getting fruiting, and the better way you are to put the fruit on there. And that's how, so that tree see. that we top worked, uh, the other tree we top worked, yeah, you can see right here where we did the tip and you get three branches where it comes out, right? So that's exactly what you want. So that's all of the trees in our orchard. This is what we do. We constantly do tipping. We constantly keep manipulating these trees in order to make them into bushes, in order to make them come into bearing. The one we top worked will bear within one year. It won't carry much, but it'll still bloom. The other thing we'll do here, in order to get these things to bloom even better, we'll take and we'll, we'll bend these branches down in about another month, and that will also tend to make them bloom earlier. Wow. We have 260, 270 trees on a half an acre. The space is about nine feet by nine feet, uh, although it's, uh, we aren't exact, you know, Ian must have not, isn't real careful about his distance. Uh, if it were done by me, it would be perfect, but yeah. it's, you know. Of course, yeah. Actually, actually, you know, it's. And how many varieties are you up to? We have about 80 varieties. Wow. Okay. As you can see, it's quite, it's quite cramped here in the grove, but, you know, we make it work. Nice. You don't make any decisions about um, what you're going to get by waiting till next year, okay? You got to do it now. So what we've just done, you can see that the trees, we've done top working on a tree here. Uh, we've gone through and we've pruned all of the trees. When we do pruning, we reduce the size. We take a little bit of thinning on them also, and we always shorten the branches, okay? By shortening the branches, this is going to give us, again, a very bushy canopy. A bushy canopy is a... Uh, a canopy that has the potential to flower, that's a canopy that's going to produce lots and lots of fruit, all right? So you cannot produce fruit if you don't get blooming, all right? And that's a big point here, right? I know it sounds stupid, but everyone says, oh, I want to produce fruit, and they don't think you got to make them bloom first, right? So you got to take steps by steps, right? So the other thing is the blooming that we have in here, all of our varieties were bred to be responsive to the weather all right we do not fertilize with uh, any inorganic fertilizer we do not push our trees for growth we push our trees for being productive productive is the important part all right in order to be productive you have to be low very low nutrition uh, no water you notice also there are no irrigation tubes in here there is nothing like that okay everything is hand watered until it's established and then we don't water after that what we do 
is a lot of pruning, pruning, pruning. Okay, so if you look at this, this is a malacca tree right here. And if you look at a malacca, you see we've been removing big branches here and allowing this canopy to re-sprout here. Two, two hand lengths, pruned it, pruned it again here, tipped it here. Now this one doesn't want to branch, right? So I'm going to tip it again. Just keep tipping them and it? tipping them oh, yeah, and that. tipping them in order to make them as bushy as possible. So that's what we keep trying to do, right? And you also look, this is actually a perfect example of the tree, all right? This is the trunk right here, right? So one, three feet coming out on this side, three feet on that side. Our trees are about, this is actually a little more than nine feet apart that's more like uh, 10 to 12 feet apart so you have six feet of tree six feet of tree on that side now unless my math is wrong I got a problem right that's too too close so we try to even bring them in a little closer than that but we are it's very tight in here and these trees though this is their ultimate size all right we do not get crazy we don't let these things get out of control keep them under control keep pruning keep tipping so if you see right behind you here is a uh, this is an orange sherbet tree now we've done the main pruning on here but when I, we did the main pruning I, probably this was done by Ian and he probably missed a spot so I'm gonna come over here behind you hear me Ian? <laughs> yeah I heard. All right. He's always taking shots. All right so what I'm gonna do though you see this again we have this branch and it's getting too long so we just tip it you don't have to think it's not rocket science all right you're just tipping and tipping and tipping and tipping and this goes on for the whole season we do this right up till Thanksgiving basically until we get bloom um, so it makes again we want bushes we don't want trees you can see this tree has a lot of, of open space in the middle of it because this tree had bigger branches going up that we took out, all right? We don't want them any taller than about eight feet tall. And uh, this is a mature, that's about a 12 year old orange sherbet tree. And uh, so this tree, we don't want any, any bigger than that. That's what we want for the rest of its life. Um, nothing complicated in terms of, of uh, care in here except it's all it's really biodynamic growing all right we do we give the tree we don't give the tree any inorganic nitrogen we don't give the tree any inorganic fertilizers of any kind we don't use any pesticides we don't use any herbicides mangoes are super sensitive to herbicides you do not want to use herbicides in a mango grove um, these trees were planted with a pick broke out the rock enough to fit them in there they find holes in the rock they drop their roots down into the holes anchor themselves and that's how we go you can see we uh, we have weeds in the grove it's not clean that's fine okay that's that makes for good fruit right these a tree like this an orange sherbet like this at this size can produce a hundred to hundred and fifty pounds per tree eventually we want two hundred pounds per tree this one can't do 200 yet because I don't have enough canopy into the middle of it. But when we have it all the way into the middle, this thing will produce, and these branches, it'll have so much fruit, this whole thing will pull down to the ground, all right? And that's what this looked like um, three weeks or two weeks ago when the fruit came off. And these trees hang down, again, 200 pounds per tree and it's tough on a tree all right these trees are stressed but that's okay now it's raining every day now they're coming back the stress is off so now you just gotta keep you know you gotta keep your hand on them a little bit because you don't want them to get out of control growth right so and you can see there's already where we do a lot of interplanting this is another smaller orange sherbet that we've planted in here our variety mix in here are, is um, rosy gold Angie, Fairchild, Malika, Orange Sherbet, Big Saturn, uh, Venus, Venus, Nebula, Diamond, Nebula, um, Mildrum. 
little gems and now as we go forward you're going to get into the real thing martian prides oh, yeah. and uh, uh star wheels and all of our more celestial series these things are just starting all right so this year get excited yeah yeah you should get excited <laughs> This year we formed our uh, we formed an executive club so that we could deliver those mangoes to people and take the time and do kind of our development of those varieties, and so it's you know it's 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 just getting good now, right? We are now we're into the we're into the phase where we're starting to see all of our new varieties come on. A lot of the varieties we bred ourselves. Um, they're all things that have great flavors. If you ask us which is the best tasting, we'll tell you. <laughs> What's ever in season? Hey man, exactly. No, I mean seriously, they're all so good. Yeah. It's 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 unbelievable, right? And so that's really kind of what we're doing. I mean, you know, right here, this this orange sherbet tree, this actually had 250 pounds on it. This tree had 250 pounds. These branches were hanging in the ground. Had to prop everything up. Um, it's you know it's the way to do it this is what we want this is the perfect tree size that we want we don't want anything bigger yep. uh you can't manage it uh we actually don't want much more than a i mean maybe we'll we're, we're going up to an acre um right now we're at a half acre we're increasing up to an acre and uh we on an acre you know hold, again we trees, yeah if we can do about 500 trees on an acre then um and put golden yeah and put 200 pounds per tree you know you do the math that's a lot of mangoes yeah. right i'm getting too old for all this you know <laughs> so he has to carry everything <laughs> Whoa, torch holder over here exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. all right so what we have here is um our biggest um pest control method is what we use tangle foot now this needs to have more put on there but the difference all Keep tangle all tangle foot is is it's a natural product um, uh, made from pine pine trees and you actually put tape tape a little cardboard in the middle and then you paint it on here and this tangle foot what it does is it keeps the ants from being able to go up the trunk of the tree so the ants go up the tree and they tend to the scales scales aphids everything else on the tree they also eat your predators all right, the predators are the ins are your beneficial insects. So um, this greatly increases when you use Tanglefoot. It'll increase the amount of beneficial insects you have in an orchard, and it'll also cut down on your scales, your mealy bug, all of that stuff. Um, it's really a very good thing, and and you don't have to apply any any uh, insecticides. Again, yep. we use no insecticides in here. There is really no reason to use insecticides on mango at all. Anybody that tells you they, that you have to use insecticides, I will tell you <laughs> that that's up to them, but they are wrong, all right? You don't have to, you shouldn't do it, it's ridiculous, all right? The people that have received our fruit, they know that the, what makes our fruit taste so good is low input, not a lot, you know, not, it's not about using agrochemicals, it's about allowing the tree to grow and put the sugar into the fruit. That's what it's all about. So what we try to do, it's another really good example, is you see how we have leaves all the way inside on these trees. Yeah. These trees are bushes with leaves all the way through to them. The only way you get sugar into a mango is this leaf. All right, this trunk right here, this costs. All right. Put the water in there. Yeah, this thing, and this thing is just, it. all it is is a net user of energy, okay? The best, the most efficient mango tree is actually a vine. <laughs> right. uh, duh. Uh, so you know you can take off the but we we can't we don't have vines so we have to grow them as, with trunks but we try to minimize the amount of wood in here that's the other thing you see when we do our pruning is we'll come in and remove wood every year too so that we get the wood out of the tree in order to make it um, controllable uh, too yeah in order to make it uh, more efficient with leaves so more pro tips from the master and his son Ian. Last time it was Tiago. Um, you know this place is absolutely rocking out. The mangoes this year were off the chain, and you heard him talk about that executive club. Um, I will admit I am a member, one of the ten only in the executive club, and the mangoes have just been unreal this year. So hope you guys enjoyed the pro tips here. 
always awesome coming back to Dr. Campbell's house. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do so and pound that bell to stay notified whenever we upload a new video. Um, most importantly, pound dirt.